um, uh, all the audience uh, of uh, uh, to be there. Uh, I don't know exactly how many people are, are present, uh, but uh, in any case, I welcome them uh, online, uh, screen to screen, I will say. Uh, but particularly uh, uh, the effort uh, that uh, is made uh, by uh, Dr. Abdel Rahman uh, Tamimi, uh, who is now in uh, near uh, Lamala in Palestine. Um, normally, um, uh, the, the idea was uh, that he comes uh, to us, to Barcelona, and also to meet people much more uh, uh, face to face uh, and, and, and have the opportunity also to, uh, uh, um, to, 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 um, to, to meet uh, students. But uh, due to coronavirus, uh, then we are forced uh, to, to take this kind of technical uh, potentialities. Uh, we are all in the learning process uh, on that, uh, uh, but uh, we have been checking the, um, the, the Main, uh, the main connection uh, with Ramallah, uh, particularly uh, with uh, Dr. Abdel Rahman uh, Tamimi, and uh, I think uh, we will, we can be, we can say we, we will be able uh, uh, um, to uh, to develop this uh, uh, this, uh, this seminar um, um, close to to the reality. Huh? That means that uh, we will begin uh, with. Uh, uh, just a brief presentation of of, uh, of uh, Dr. Abdelrahman Tamimi. Then um, uh, uh, he will speak uh, about uh, mainly the, the main conference. But uh, he had also requested to know something, uh, some more about the effect of coronavirus uh, in Palestine. We were just uh, in off uh, speaking about these matters, and uh, I, I hope um, uh, we will have a brief overview. Uh, which is not so positive as you may uh, uh, understand. So, and after that, after the, 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 the main lecture of, of, of Dr. Abderrahman Tamimi, then uh, we will go uh, through uh, a debate. Uh, um, and this kind of uh, uh, debate uh, will be also shared by me. Uh, I will take um, uh, uh, um, question and answers uh, uh, procedure as, as always, but also uh, try also to take uh, the chat and uh, other questions also that are done uh, through YouTube uh, uh, if I've been um, uh, informed, as I've been informed. Let me, let me before uh, properly uh, thanks uh, Dr. Uh, Abderrahman Tamemi to be there. Uh, uh, Dr. Abderrahman Tamemi is uh, with us uh, and, and connected with a network uh, of uh, Euromedmich, which is a recent uh, network of researchers uh, on Mediterranean and, and migration Mediterranean issues that um, has been recognized by the IMISCOE networks uh, of uh, a, European centers on migration, uh, at least uh, 51 of 52 uh, uh, European centers, and uh, and um, and also by the Union for the Mediterranean. And uh, we are also working closely with uh, EMET uh, uh, on this network. And then we are very pleased uh, in this framework and also in the form of our Jean Monnet uh, 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 network uh, um, um, uh, project that we have uh, uh, in, in Green Team uh, to welcome him. Uh, also to EMED, of course, because EMED allow us also technically also to, uh, uh, to, 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 to do this lecture. And, uh, just let me, let me present uh, Dr. Uh, Tamimi, uh, has been working uh, uh, in the field of NGOs uh, in the occupied Palestinian territories during the last 25 years. Activities focus on water resources and integrated rural development, community development. Before the establishment of the Palestinian Authority, he had been member of the group of Palestinian uh, counterparts in, uh, to the EU and on the World Bank. Uh, he contributed uh, uh, in the in initiation of priority and planning the strategic project. Uh, he also worked as consultant for institutions working on developing water and environment uh, project in the occupied uh, territories. He acted as board of member in several local and regional NGOs and was member of the steering committee for the Palestinian NGOs networks. Uh, Dr. Tamimin also is part-time lecturer at Alquit University in the field of sustainable development and also Arab American University in the field of strategic planning and fundraising. He is co-author also, uh, and lastly, uh, of many reports. The last one 
is a, a preparatory to the EU uh, Intital Mediterranean Challenge 2020, uh, uh, 30, sorry. And he has several publications um, in his one related to institutional building, empowerment, stakeholders, dialogue, and transna and border uh, water conflicts. Uh, uh, welcome, to, uh, Dr. Tamemik. Thank you again, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening for everybody. And uh, really, uh, I, I do appreciate this opportunity. And uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Ricardo to give me this uh, golden opportunity. Uh, I, I wish to make this lecture face to face, but uh, you know, we are living under uh, restrictions from coronavirus. And also, I want to thank the Institute to host us uh, through its channel. and. Uh, uh, my presentation will be actually uh, psychotherapy for myself because all of us we are uh, in homes and to connect with uh, with the people international people uh, it's uh, it's a special pleasure for me and also the Palestinians they feel are isolated and when we are uh, connected with the friends with the colleagues in, in Europe and other countries. Also, it's a great pleasure for us. My presentation will be about, uh, let me just uh, share with you the slides. Is it okay? Yeah, it's perfect, it's perfect. Uh, yeah, sorry. My, my presentation will be the impact of refugees on urban planning in local Palestinian communities. Uh, my presentation will uh, consist from uh, 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 different topics, introduction and background, major trends in Palestine, uh, major challenges, status of refugees and immigrants, and uh, at the end, coronavirus impact on refugees and in general in Palestine. Historic background, I, I, I will not go in details in history. But you know, ba Palestine uh, in the modern history occupied by Ottoman Empire or, or Turkish uh, rule, British mandate, Jordanian rule, Israeli occupation, and at the end, uh, the, the establishment of the Palestinian uh, National Authority. Of course, this is in fact the legal system, the political system, we, it's accumulated impact and really, it's, uh, it's uh, the Palestinian Authority uh, received very heavy history and from political point of view, from legal point of view, socio-economic point of view, environmental point of view. And uh, nowadays we, we are dealing with uh, the damages, the damages happened uh, along the century. Uh, uh, this is just to give you an, an overview about the distribution of refugees. Uh, we have refugees uh, camps in Lebanon, 12-1. We have refugees camps in, uh, in Jordan, 10 camps. In Syria, nine camps. And in West Bank, 19 camps. And in Gaza, eight camps. That's meaning the people who are moved from historic Palestine, which is called now Israel, to West Bank, remained in West Bank, and this is a, a, a West Bank and Gaza, around 27 refugees camps. Uh, and uh, uh, in Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and of course, there are small communities in different Arab countries. But this is the major uh, camps. Uh, uh, and of course, the camps governed uh, all services done by UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works, uh, agency uh, services, I mean water, electricity, uh, education, health, uh, all that services in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and West Bank and Gaza presented by uh, UNRWA, which is UN uh, agency. In, 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 in terms of uh, population, population, 42% of the refugees are living in Palestine in the 27 camps and uh, uh, around 8.7% uh, living in Lebanon, and 10% in Syria, and 38% in Jordan. If you see the, the numbers, uh, it's around 60% uh, of the Palestinians 
are living outside Palestine under the legal status called uh, refugees. The, the, in, uh, if, if we look to the recent, because many refugees also, because the, the, the difficult situation in Syria now moved from Syria to other countries and uh, uh, in Lebanon also, because the restrictions on the socioeconomic life of the Palestinian refugees in Lebanon, some of them forced to leave Lebanon to other countries, especially to Europe and uh, North Europe. And nowadays we have 41% uh, uh, of, the, of the population in, in West Bank and Gaza are refugees, 26% uh, in West Bank and 60 Four percent in Gaza, which means two thirds of people in Gaza are refugees. They are came from historic Palestine to Gaza from uh, what 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 so called now Israel, and uh, also some of them live to West Bank. The average is around forty one percent of the Palestinian population are uh, registered in UN uh, agency UNRWA as refugees. Their legal status are refugees since 72 years. And uh, this is the, the distribution of the refugees camps in Jordan. This is the map shows the red uh, dots are uh, the refugees camps in Syria and Lebanon in Jordan and uh, in West Bank and uh, in Gaza. Uh, and uh, the, uh, in the left side, uh, you can see the total population of uh, each country in, in Lebanon, uh, the, the, the largest uh, numbers actually in Jordan, then in Syria, uh, in Lebanon, sorry, and uh, in Syria, and the total is around 4 million Palestinians are registered as refugees in, in other countries. Uh, the distribution of population in, in the whole country is uh, like this. Uh, the, I mean the population of Palestinians, refugees and not refugees. We have uh, 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 around 72% uh, 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 are living in, uh, in occupied Palestinian, 27, sorry, 27% living in Palestinian occupied territories, 39% uh, in Jordan, which means the Palestinians in Jordan more than the Palestinians in Palestine. This is strange. And also we have uh, around 11% uh, living outside the Palestine uh, in foreign countries and 20% are living between Arab countries and inside Israel, inside Israel. What are the challenges facing Palestinian cities, urban areas? The first one, the demographic growth and rapid urbanization. But this rapid urbanization is unplanned urbanization uh, because we have in, in Palestine, we have a small area, but we have a huge population growth. And the population growth uh, estimated to be 4.6%, uh, which is very high, very, very high. <laughs> not only, not only, is it okay, the, the voice? Yeah, I think it's okay. You can go yeah. on, yeah. Uh, the, 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 if we look to Gaza, it is 360 square kilometer. 120 square kilometer are built up areas and 80, 80 kilometer are agricultural, uh, uh, agricultural areas, which means only 100 uh, uh, kilometer is allowed for people to, to uh, to make uh, their houses and the, 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 the other urban, uh, urban activities. The, the number of the people who are in one kilometer square, the average, what we call it uh, population density, is the highest in the world, is 9,000 people in one ki square kilometer. And this is the highest in the world. And imagine if a chronic disease or uh, is a, uh, a communicable disease uh, spread out, this is, will be a disaster to, to Gaza people because really it's very crowded and poor infrastructure. This is one of the major problems we are facing 
because I, I will explain now uh, later on what does mean small area and large amount of people and what is the main drivers behind that. It is because the, the, the political situation and the uh, so-called Oslo agreement. Also, we have geopolitical conflict and geographical fragmentation. There is no geographical connections between West Bank and Gaza and Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem has different legal status now. Uh, West Bank has different legal status and uh, geographically Gaza has, uh, has geographically and politically has different uh, uh, legal and political status, but also it's uh, fragmented because we have uh, division. In West Bank, we have a government. In Gaza, almost no government. In Jerusalem, is still under Israeli occupation. Also, we have uh, outdated laws and regulations. Imagine we are in 2020, and uh, the almost 100 years before, 100 years, the, uh, the Turkish uh, embargo left us around 100 years, and still we have Turkish laws and regulations. Also, the British, we have some laws since the British mandate, and we have, we have some Israeli military orders, and we have a new Palestinian laws. All of them are in practice, and this is make the institutional arrangement, the governance, so-called governance, uh, the, uh, huge deficiencies and a huge uh, poor institutional arrangement. Uh, also, there is a lot of, another uh, uh, another uh, challenge facing the Palestinians is Oslo Agreement. Oslo Agreement divided West Bank to three categories. Uh, we call it A, Area A, Area B, Area C. What does mean Area A, Area B, Area C? Area A is the cities, the actually the downtowns of the cities. Uh, controlled fully by Palestinian Authority, and this is around 60% uh, of the uh, territories, or 6% of the West Bank. And we have uh, B area, which is rural areas, populated rural areas, and this is also controlled by Palestinians for civil affairs, for water, education, uh, uh, electricity, and uh, the security controlled by Israelis. And we have uh, Area C, which is 64% of West Bank, totally controlled by Israelis. The civil affairs, the military affairs, the security, the borders, uh, everything, everything controlled by Israelis. And, in that, and that's why we have geographical fragmentation between West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem, three entities, and inside West Bank, we have, as you see, uh, different classification of the governance, uh, part of it Israel, part of it joint between Palestinians and Israelis, and part of it Palestinians. And this is from planning point of view. This is from urban, uh, urban planning. It's impossible mission, because if you see the map, it is, it is not integrated geographical areas. It is a Swiss cheese. And uh, it, is, it is difficult to do urban planning for a Swiss cheese. It is a fragmented, scattered areas. And this is one of the major problem of the refugee camps, because in 1948, when the Palestinians uh, forced to leave to displaced uh, uh, areas, to uh, the people displaced to another areas, since 19, 48 till now the population growth in the refugees camp six times uh, more than the original numbers but the land allocated to the refugee camps is the same that's why it's a huge crowded a huge disaster if there is any uh, disease or any environmental problem because uh, and uh, in gaza nowadays I will show you some things. Uh, in, in, in Gaza, uh, the average per room, 6.7 person per room, per room. And this is a huge, a huge uh, 
uh, urban planning problem, a huge uh, uh, population management problem, a huge uh, service delivery problems because there is a there is no place for uh, infrastructure actually to do roads to do water pipes and this is one of them other so, the other problem is while we are we are geographically fragmented inside west bank there is a fragmentation as and i said there is uh, uh, swiss cheese uh, no for com from governance point of view we have additional load which is israeli settlements in west bank which is a very small area 5500 square kilometer we have 142 israeli settlements and this is around 1 million population plus there is 200000 israelis living in east jerusalem if, if you have if you have if you have this situation, you have fragmented geographical areas. You have 60% uh, uh, of your uh, land under, uh, out of under your control. Uh, uh, the Israeli settlements, they have different status, different infrastructure. They have different roads, different water pipes, different electricity grades. Then it is impossible mission to do urban planning and all this is will affect the the future of refugees camp and the future of the palestinian cities the palestinian urbanization uh, process uh, controlled totally by israeli settlements because uh, they are they put a, a restricted area to the palestinian cities uh, they cannot uh, extend beyond that uh, borders Additional to that, we have the wall. Uh, you, you, you heard about the separation wall, or uh, I, I call it annexation wall, and uh, the wall is uh, annexed, uh, actually extracted 1,328 uh, square kilometer, which is around 23.4% of the total West Bank. And you see the, the red lines, the red lines is the uh, areas annexed to Israel is not only land, but also part of the water is becomes inside Israel. And the water, the wall is not only a physical, a physical construction. It is a psychological barrier. The Israelis they believe the other side are the enemy. The Palestinians they believe the other side uh, are the enemy. And in in my opinion, this is psychological barrier. This is a barrier encourage hatred between uh, two, two, two uh, nations. If we come to the specific problems uh, of the refugees, we have, I said, uh, for, as I said, forced immigration. We, we, have, we have around one, we have around half million, half million of Palestinians living in Syria and Lebanon, and they are now because the the uh, instability in Syria and Lebanon, they are forced to leave to Europe or other places. And this is uh, the major problem. They will lose their identity because when they were in Lebanon, the, the, they are, their, their uh, legal status is, uh, is uh, refugees. But when you go outside to Europe, they will lose the, uh, their entity uh, and they will uh, ref, uh, lose the the status of refugee. Also, we have high population growth inside the uh, the, the uh, refugees camps. And as I said, uh, in in West Bank and in Gaza, we have the highest population growth in the refugees camps. While the refugees camps borders uh, the uh, didn't increase since 72 years. Yani the same people who are double every 16 years, six times double now, uh, uh, they are living in the same area uh, defined to them since 1948. Uh, and as I said, there is in some refugees camps, the average is 6.3 person per room. Also, UNRWA, the UN agency responsible for uh, for uh, services to the refugees camps. The last three years, uh, they shrink their services 
they cut their budget because uh, President Trump also uh, opened the war against UNRWA and he wants to dismantle UNRWA to, uh, to diminish the Palestinian refugees' problems. Uh, in the refugees' camps, there is poor infrastructure, no wastewater collection system, no proper ro uh, roads, uh, schools are very old, and all these kinds of infrastructure are really poor, uh, and some of them constructed in 1948 without any rehabilitation since that time. The, also, the Palestinian Authority very weak, fragmented, and as you know, we have division, we have government in West Bank, government in Gaza, Israel in Jerusalem, and from governance point of view, the Palestinian Authority very weak, fragmented, uh, weak in capacity of, of uh, governance, weak in, in terms of political power as political power, and weak uh, as service provider. Now, coronavirus uh, added to our problems a huge problem. That is because the disintegration of geography, the Palestinian Authority is not allowed to uh, uh, provide services for the people, like to provide uh, Jerusalemite people uh, with hygiene uh, or sanitation materials, uh, with uh, vaccination or whatever medical support. Uh, the Palestinian Authority has no chance to uh, or no, uh, not allowed to give uh, any services to the Palestinians living in Jerusalem, as well as in Area C. Area C, as I said, it is controlled by Israelis totally, uh, and uh, the Palestinian Authority, they cannot give services to the refugees and to the regular citizen uh, services. In West Bank also, as I mentioned, in the, and as you have seen in the, in the map, is a fragmented areas. It's very difficult to give uh, services, especially uh, uh, emergency services like uh, corona, corona crisis uh, services. The, in Gaza, the Palestinian Authority is not existing in Gaza. Uh, Hamas government there, and Hamas government has no capacity in, in terms of uh, equipment, in terms of uh, 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 staff and human resources. Also, they cannot offer a proper services to the people to challenge the coronavirus uh, disaster. Uh, workers in Israel is a big problem for us. In Israel, they have a lot of cases, uh, more than the Palestinians, and some of the Palestinian workers return home with the virus and uh, there is no proper mechanism to check and to do medical tests to the Palestinian workers inside Israel. And Israel, uh, they uh, dismissed them outside the, the Israeli borders to the West Bank without any uh, check. The financial problem, as you know, the Palestinian Authority, around 35% of their, uh, of their uh, public budget is from uh, foreign aids from uh, don donors uh, and international uh, agencies like World Bank and uh, IMF. Unfortunately, the last year, the Palestinians, they didn't receive funds from different countries. And that's why we have a huge deficit in our public budget. Uh, Israeli restrictions, as, as you know, in, uh, uh, in according to the agreement, the Israelis collecting taxes taxes uh, to in, in behalf of the Palestinian Authority to all the products comes from outside. And uh, usually the Israelis, they transfer that money to the Palestinians. But unfortunately, the last year, the Israelis, they cut 50% of the tax and they didn't uh, reimburse the Palestinian uh, uh, Authority. Also, we have the highest internal immigration uh, rate we are the highest immigration from rural areas to the urban areas, from refugees camps to the urban areas due to the Israeli restriction on expansion the rural and refugees areas. As I said, the Israelis, they don't allow to rural areas to be expanded, <coughs> whatever the population growth, as well as uh, they restricted the refugees camps not, uh, uh, not to be expanded and to, to have uh, wider uh, built up areas. Uh, fragmented governance, I mentioned about the fragmented governments. Uh, 
uh, in West Bank, in Gaza, in, ja in Jerusalem, and without integrated government, without uh, central uh, vision, national vision, it's very difficult to, to, uh, to deal with corona uh, virus. This is the WHO uh, uh, presentation about the Palestinian coronavirus uh, cases. Uh, it's uh, up to yesterday was 456 uh, cases, uh, uh, 20, uh, 210 recovered, and uh, we have three, death, uh, three deaths only. And somebody will, uh, uh, sorry, somebody has the right to ask why very little while you are poor infrastructure, poor medical services, simply because we have no airports, we have no uh, uh, borders, the borders controlled by Israelis, the airport coming, the people coming from Jordan, and all people who are coming from outside, they pass through Israel and pass through Jordan, and they, both countries, they don't allow them to come to Palestine. That's why we don't have... Uh, uh, cases came from outside, uh, and we have no uh, uh, no com no uh, chances or no opportunities to communicate the, the the disease. That's why we have a small amount of, in comparison with the world, we have a small numbers of cases. The, what what happened uh, as post Corona impact? Still, we are in Corona a crisis. But post-corona impact, we in, we expecting, and myself and uh, 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 our colleagues, we did uh, a very quick uh, survey and a very quick uh, baseline survey to see what is the poverty rate, expected poverty rate after the corona, and we expecting the Palestinian uh, territories will face uh, a severe poverty around 60%. And uh, the unemployment will increase 32 to, uh, to up to 32 percent, and number of families needs financial support <clears throat> will be around the 25 percent. People affordability to the basic service will be shrinked, and they will be not able to pay for the services. And when they don't pay to the services, we expect 24 percent of the local authorities will be collapsed because the revenue from electricity, water, whatever, uh, will, will, will be very little because the people they have, uh, the people affordability very low. And also the Palestinian capacity, the Palestinian authority capacity for recovery or very quick recovery is, is very long. Maybe we need 10 years to recover the situation if, if we can cover. And international fund will be reduced 30% of the national budget uh, be, uh, because uh, we do believe uh, because the crisis, uh, economic crisis, the, the inside Europe and inside uh, other countries, Japan and China, they will not support us as well as they used to support from the past. Uh, because the time restriction, I will stop here and I will do welcome uh, your questions, your uh, clarifications, and really I, I do appreciate uh, uh, your presence here in the Zoom uh, lecture, and really uh, I'm very happy to, to listen to your uh, reaction. Thank you very much. Yes. Ricardo, I can I, Ricardo, open your uh, open your mic. Yes, you are you are right because I closed my my micro because uh, uh, it was uh, it was better to listen to you. But uh, I was just saying that uh, I thank you for this wonderful overview of the Palestinian situation of refugees and also uh, to have made the effort to uh, incorporate also the coronavirus situation, which as as I. Uh, understood a, a direct effect on the um, refugee situation uh, in particular. Uh, now it's time to uh, thank you also for the limit because you are, we request you 40 minutes and, and it has been wonderful also uh, from this point. And that does mean also that we are plenty time uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for question and answers and also uh, for the chat. We can use both. 
the chat, the question and answer, and also if somebody uh, wanted to intervene, uh, uh, you are uh, most than welcome. Uh, it's time also now for the participants uh, uh, to to uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to um, um, uh, speak. Okay. Some, somebody want to speak? Yes, Dante Maggi. At least we have the name. <laughs> uh, maybe you can present yourself uh, because I know that most of the audience are master students and I welcome them. I'm sorry because I, 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 I didn't mention them, but I welcome them, of course. And uh, I hope everybody is safe also. And uh, I give the floor to, to Dante Maggi who wanted to to say something um sure well hello everybody first of all hope you're all well and safe um as well as your families uh thank you for the presentation um professor it was uh, very intense a lot of points and uh, well i'm just a student a master student at the master program and my question is related to um the refugee camps not just the Palestine refugee camps, but the refugee camps full of Palestines in Europe, you know. Um, and uh, I have visited some of them in Greece on the islands, and I was quite surprised to see the number of Palestinians living under terrible conditions as well. Um, in well, in Lesbos, some and so on and so forth. And uh, I was very triggered, you know, because. These camps are controlled by uh, UNHCR, and uh, and I was wondering actually uh, how much actually UNRWA uh, plays a role in this camp, you know, and if the if the Palestinian refugees uh, end up you know in in a land of nowhere uh, because like there is no institution. Uh, that clearly takes responsibility for them. You know, I would like to know like more about this. You know, how they are um, handled. You know, taking care um, in terms of um, you know the difference between UNRWA and UNHCR. You know, in the cases of um, refugee camps, um, yeah, that have okay. a lot of Palestinians in Europe. Thank you, Dante, for for your questions. And maybe we can take another one, or you can, if you want to answer, because we have time. And then, uh, if you want to answer, and then after that, I will I will I will take some question also that have been done in the in the Q and A uh, uh, yes. uh, section. Yes, Th thank you for the question. And uh, also, there is a similar question on the chat. I I just read it, and I will try to answer both of them. Uh, actually, oh, thank you. Yeah. Actually, most of the, not most, 90% of the uh, Palestinians recently moved to Europe. They are came from uh, Lebanon and Syria. After the internal war in Syria, we used to have around 1.5 million Palestinians in Syria, especially in large camps, and they are uh, uh, forced to leave by ISIS. Uh, and of course, they, they left uh, in different ways. Uh, the, uh, most of them went to Turkey, to Syria, to Greece, to Germany, uh, and uh, most of them, they went illegally. Why illegally? Because the Palestinians, they don't have a passports. They have so-called uh, travel document issued by uh, Syria, and this is valid only to Arab countries, and they cannot enter uh, Europe with this uh, uh, so-called uh, travel document. That's why most of them uh, went to Greece, to Europe illegally. And uh, of course, uh, a lot of people who are uh, trying to help them to, to enter, they, uh, they, some of them did, uh, some of them faced death in the, in the roads. Some of them, they paid a lot of money to, to do that, but was no choice because the, in Syria, uh, the Lebanon uh, and Syria, 
the refugees camps almost empty because the civil war. The Palestinians in Lebanon, they have different uh, problems. We have in Lebanon, the, the Lebanese government recently issued a law. The Palestinians who are living in Lebanon since 40 years, they're not allowed to work in 142 jobs. The only thing they can do is to work in construction as cheap labor or to work as a, a, a servants in the houses. This is the two jobs are allowed to the Palestinians and some Palestinians, they have PhDs and master and, and uh, that's why also they try to, to, to escape to Europe uh, in the last five years uh, because uh, UNRWA uh, has nothing to offer for these people, especially in terms of jobs, in terms of uh, services. That's why the young people and 60% of the refugees camps uh, re uh, population are uh, less than 30 years. That's why the young people, they move to Europe to see another chance in the life uh, in different ways. And most of the ways, as I said, is, is illegal, are uh, illegal ways. Uh, but in Lebanon, they forced to leave. In Lebanon, the, the Lebanon government, they forced them to leave because the situation also inside the, inside the, uh, the refugees camps, disaster, disaster. Uh, just yesterday, I was phoning my friend of mine and he said, if I want to change the door, the door of my rooms, I need, Israel, I need a permit from Lebanon government because there is a checkpoint in the front of the, of the refugees camp. They, cannot, they don't allow to any, uh, any material to enter without permit. And in Syria, you know, the Syrians left Syria and the Palestinians as well left. Uh, Anirwa, as soon as you leave the refugee camp uh, in Syria or in Lebanon or in West Bank or in Gaza or on Jordan, you are not, uh, the Anirwa has no, uh, legal uh, procedure to deal with you as a refugee. You, uh, they are not entitled. You are become under the mandate of UNCHR, which is the UN uh, Refugees Commission, or, uh, uh, the, but UNRWA has nothing to do. In most cases, the Palestinians who left the refugees camps, they are squeezed between UNH and UN and UNRWA and they lost in between. Nobody gave them services. And that's why uh, they are uh, left without any services. They are uh, left behind in, in, in Greece, in Spain, in, in, uh, in, in other countries because the UN, nothing to do with them outside the refugees camps. Thank you for these uh, long, uh, but, but you, you answered both questions. Uh, the, the, the question yes. that, that for Dante and also for Nuria Padros uh, about uh, Lebanon. Thank you for that. Uh, we have another question re uh, regarding the fragmented governance uh, arguments uh, um, uh, done by Mustafa El Kordi. He says uh, 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 that uh, uh, fragmented governance in, in 2008, uh, when the Hamas government took over control, was the situation better or? Uh, after the reconciliation agreement, uh, uh, after the Palestinian Authority Security Force took place in yeah. Gaza. Uh, that's mean, I, I'm, okay, this is maybe some subjective, uh, but in any case, uh, I don't know what, what better uh, means in this case, but uh, I think, in I any think, case, yeah, I think, uh, I think yeah. it's, uh, it's understandable. <laughs> the situation in Gaza is disaster, and it is not my, uh, my, my judgment. Uh, the UN report, uh, published in 2018, they said uh, uh, Gaza in 2020 and nowadays, it's not the place to live because there is no water, no electricity, poverty, unemployment, bad governments, all kinds of problems are there. Not because Hamas, Hamas is part of the problem, but also part of the problem the uh, the, uh, the Israeli uh, close, uh, closure. The Israelis, they don't allow anything to enter Gaza and because they say this is used for, uh, for
for uh, military purposes. I don't know if, if the sugar can be used for uh, military purpose or salt or whatever, but it is excused. That's why the situation in Gaza, and as I said, the, the 62 percent of Gazan's people are refugees, which means they have no land to do agriculture like other, other people. Uh, Hamas is part of the problem because Hamas is not well institutionalized. It is not a government, actually. It is not a government. It is a, 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 a political party with, the, with a military groups controlling the, the people. It's not institutions. Uh, this is what I mean. Governments meaning institutions. Hamas has no institutions to, to run the, the, serv uh, the services and civil affairs of the people to do roads, to do water, to do electricity. Hamas cannot do that. And they have no capacity to do that, financial and the human resources. But uh, the problem is the restrictions from Israelis. Hamas is part of the problem. Palestinian Authority, because they want to punish Hamas, they punish also the people. And th that's why the uh, situation in Gaza is very complex. And everybody, include myself, we are, we are uh, part of the problem of Hamas because we are keeping silent. Hamas is, uh, uh, Gaza is dying. Gaza is dying from environmental point of view. The people, they are drinking water unfit for agriculture. Imagine you can drink water uh, 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 polluted with sewage, with sewage. The nitrate, if I, if, if I have time, I can show you some <coughs> chemical analy analysis. The nitrate, the chloride, the fluoride, it's 10 times more than what is permitted by WHO standards. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, this is the, the situation in Gaza. Everybody is, uh, are blamed. Everybody is part of the problem. Thank you. Thank you for uh, these uh, uh, specific uh, uh, answers um, to the specific question. And we can, we can give more floor to, uh, uh, to people. Uh, you can... Uh, you can ask a question through the three men chat, uh, Q and answers, and also uh, directly if you want. Uh. Please do not be shy. <laughs> uh, we will not have another opportunity to have uh, a Palestinian expert with us. Yeah, but. Maybe I will, I, will, I will try because as a share also, I have some questions also as a, uh, um, um, uh, um, I will just formulate two, two kind of questions. The, the first one is about uh, uh, the urbanization growth uh, that, that you mentioned at the beginning uh, uh, and the difficulties of, of, of articulating this urbanization. I know that urbanization is not specific to, uh, to Palestine. It is uh, uh, already in the South. Uh, most of the urbanization is related to mobility and to refugees and, and, and migration. And then there is a strong link between urbanization, mobility and migration. And uh, I, I guess that in the case of, uh, of Palestine, the, uh, this uh, disarticulated uh, uh, urbanization uh, because of the fragmented uh, uh, governance is worse. But I would like to know more about uh, uh, what does urbanization uh, means in Palestinian terms, uh, um, um, and, and also uh, socially, how this urbanization also is uh, is uh, is affecting also uh, the what you mentioned. You mentioned the rural uh, and urban mobility and internal mobility, which is also a trend uh, on the Palestinian. This is my first question. Huh? Um, uh, my, my second question uh, um, deals more about. Um, maybe the effect of coronavirus on the refugees and so on. Uh, uh, you have mentioned it, as, uh, I think, uh, uh, all the issues, but uh, uh, as far as I understand, uh, uh, there are two kinds of issues related to uh, the relation between Palestine and international uh, uh, authorities in terms of funding. Huh? Not only 30%, uh, uh, if I understood correctly, uh, of the international fund, because Palestine depends of that, huh? uh, depend of this funding, are being cut uh, because of COVID coronavirus. This is not only a trend in Palestine, but um, uh, yeah, as far as I know, this is a general trend. 
uh, the, the most of the development funding have been cut because of coronavirus, and then uh, we uh, we envisage some short-term effects of that uh, uh, in terms of uh, coronavirus could be a driver of migration or more migration in the Mediterranean huh? because of development uh, policy cannot be done because of lack of funds and so on. And also uh, related to that is, is uh, the, the current project. Uh, I know that in Gaza there are many projects, most of them related to water. Uh, I know even relation with other cities. I know that uh, Barcelona, for instance, has some project in Gaza uh, 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 related to that. And then how does it, it is affecting also because I guess that uh, as we are in an isolation uh, and, and lack of mobility situation, most of the development that were already uh, there have been uh, completely uh, cut. And then from this point of view, um, this also uh, is an additional trend uh, for the Palestinian situation. Um, I, I would like to know more about uh, about these two issues, uh, if, you, if you can extend more on the, uh, uh, these issues. Uh. Yeah, uh, for the first question about the urbanization, actually what uh, is uh, uh, going on in Palestine is not real urbanization actually, is restricted uh, uh, urbanization controlled by external uh, drivers. For example, uh, Ramallah, Ramallah is the most uh, sophisticated city in, in terms of uh, uh, modern uh, services but it is uh, restricted by three Israeli settlements. They cannot expand the areas because the Israeli settlements around the, around the city and the shape of the city, the shape of the city controlled by Israeli settlements. Uh, the other things uh, is the Palestinian rural areas, they are restricted by Israelis because most of them in area C, not to expand. And when they go to the west, uh, the city, they still act as rural areas. And that's uh, creating a really different uh, architecture of the city, different uh, poor architecture, uh, high uh, and fancy architecture, and the character of the Palestinian traditional city, city almost finished, almost diminished. That's the second thing. The third thing is the infrastructure in the cities are unable to afford the, the newcomers. Uh, that's why Ramallah is the most sophisticated city in the West Bank, but we have only three days a week water. 90% uh, of our uh, houses are not connected with wastewater because the population uh, movement from rural areas and from refugees to the cities uh, 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 are more than expected and uh, are uh, really uh, rapid population growth uh, because this large amount of, of people who are coming to Ramallah. And this is the case of the other cities. That's why the urbanization actually, it is what we, ha we have now is, is a middle area between rural areas. You cannot say our cities are urban areas, but you cannot say, sit say it is rural areas. And that's why the urban areas ent uh, entity and character is lost already. You cannot see it as a city and you cannot see it as a rural area because the, the, whole, uh, the whole areas are reshaped. This is the question. The second question about uh, actually uh, what I said 30% of our public budget, it is not for the, the uh, from foreign aid, it is not for development. It is for paying salaries of the employees. We, we need more money for development, for uh, uh, schools, for uh, public health. That's why luckily, luckily we had no uh, large number of, uh, of uh, cases from coronavirus. Otherwise we cannot do anything. Uh, that's why uh, the, infra the poor infrastructure, because there is no finance to the poor infrastructure. And nowadays, uh, the most uh, unemployment rate, the biggest unemployment rate is among the university graduates. And this is a big problem for Palestinian uh, 
authority because the only things to solve their problem, they are thinking to move to, to, to leave uh, West Palestine. And this is what the Israelis want, that they want. And this is becomes voluntary immigration because the situation, the environment of the living, uh, the socioeconomic conditions are very, uh, very complex. That's why all the, the, the young people thinking to move to another country. And this is uh, a really big loss to the Palestinian people because our brains drain to the, to the outside and we, we are lose our social capital. Thank you for this, uh, uh, this uh, answer. I, I am just taking some question uh, from the chat now. Uh, yes. um, and I have, I have one directly by, by Bianca Steffe that say, okay, uh, given the situation, I, I just try to uh, summarize and I hope I would summarize correctly. Given the, the current situation, um, what, uh, what, what kind of uh, recommendation you, you to improve the infrastructural and general condition? Uh, for the refugees uh, you have, uh, uh, and probably also for the world population, the Palestinian areas. Huh? How can it be managed uh, in, in these terms? If you have some uh, some um, uh, position uh, related to that, yeah. Yeah, I, I, as I said, the situation in Palestine is very very complex and cannot be described in in, in 40 minutes. But uh, uh, I think there is a lot of groups, they are willing, uh, Palestinian groups, international uh, solidarity groups, they are willing to support Palestinians, but uh, the problems is bigger than our, our capacity and bigger than our, our uh, really uh, resources. That's why uh, always we need help from outside, but the, the major help can be is uh, political help to ask to end the incubation. And after that, we will manage uh, ourselves. And uh, I see there is somebody uh, in the chat uh, saying there is, uh, uh, there is civil society, active civil society, but we, we don't have time to do lobbying and advocacy because we are overwhelmed for the services. We, we are, uh, for example, my organization, we are serving around 200 villages in water, and this is a big headache. We, we are in Area C, we are playing the role of the government, uh, while we are a small NGO and relatively. Uh, relatively. Uh, and uh, the health organizations, the water organization, the social welfare organization, they are uh, really overloaded with the problems. Uh, that's why sometimes they do lobbying and advocacy. And uh, one of the major problem we are facing now because so-called Arab Spring, uh, the Palestinian uh, conflict became uh, at the end of the list of uh, priorities to the world. Now the, the international community looking to Yemen, looking to uh, Syria, looking to Libya, looking to other countries and the Palestinian question uh, actually became uh, at the, at the bottom of the list of priorities. And this is a big danger because now Israelis, they do uh, anything and uh, the world keeps silent. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we have another question about um, maybe more concrete question for, uh, uh, for Mustafa al Kaldi, the, the Egyptian uh, student that we have in, in the master. Uh, and regarding um, Rafala border operat uh, operation, uh, how is the Rafala, uh, a border. Uh, if the situation of the border has changed with coronavirus, it is completely closed or, or even uh, for thread lines or, and so on. Uh, what is the situation? The situation now, uh, the Palestinians are restricted in, uh, to move inside the cities. We cannot go outside. Uh, we cannot go to Israel. We cannot go to Jerusalem. You know, to, to travel to in the normal life before the coronavirus, to come to Madrid easier for me uh, more than to go to Gaza or to go to uh, Egypt. Uh, th this is movement uh, issue is, is a very big issue and many Palestinians, especially uh, young people, Palestinians, they are not allowed to travel outside to participate in uh, conferences, workshops and activities. 
And uh, there is also a, a question in the chat relevant to that. The Palestinian Authority actually, they do administration things. They have nothing to do with coronavirus. They just keep uh, asking the people, do awareness to the people to, to, to stay in home. But uh, as I said, luckily we have, uh, 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 in comparison with other countries, we have a few hundreds of cases. Uh, this is controllable, but if we have thousands of cases like uh, Europe or like uh, other countries, the Palestinian Authority capacity, nothing to do with the large coronavirus crisis. Okay, thank you. More other questions? Um, I don't know if I have forgotten some questions or somebody wants to also to intervene uh, uh, through the screen. Don't be shy. Yeah, yeah welcome. Yes? I can't so, do that. Okay, who? Who is speaking? Oh, that's me again. Oh, Dante, okay. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, well, yeah, so um, my question in regards to the international uh, funds, uh, aid coming to the uh, to the help for the, for the Palestinians. And uh, just generally speaking, you know, you um, Ab Abdel Rahman. Um, Haman, thank you. Uh, in your experience on the ground, you know, yes. what, 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 what's your analysis about like where uh, the money goes actually? You know, is it going mostly to civil society organization? Is it going to government um, bodies? And where the money should go, you know, ideally? That's, yeah. that's one question. Um, yeah. The other question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then the other question is related to the civil society itself, you know. Um, and uh, once that traveling, you know, in, in Israel, in, in the Palestinian territories, I came across a very interesting initiative, you know, uh, run both by uh, Palestinian and Israeli uh, citizens. You know, they, it was just a small community, you know, alternative community that. Uh, they did great stuff, I think. And uh, I'd like to know more about how much such initiatives are supported and if they uh, exist um, more or less. Because I was there in, in 2016, I'd like to know if there have been more and more cases of partnerships between like uh, civilian civil societies from both sides. As you said, you know, you, you really feel hate in the air and the other things. Uh, the Israel is the enemy, and then Palestinian uh, Israel speaks that Palestinian is the enemy. But there are some some interesting um, exceptions, and I'd like to know more about uh, like civil society acting, you know, but civil society from both sides acting in partnership. And, Thank you, Dante. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, for, for, for the first question, actually, the Palestinians uh, uh, last 10 years, they received around $6.5 billion uh, as, uh, as a donation from outside, uh, what we call it international aid. And how it's distributed? 20% it goes to the UN agencies. 20% of this money goes to UNICEF, UNESCO, UNRWA, mostly to the UNRWA, actually. Uh, FAO, WHO, all the UN agencies working in Palestine. St uh, and around uh, 40 to 45 percent goes to the Palestinian Authority to pay the salaries. And uh, uh, unfortunately, most of the salaries goes to the security forces. Uh, the rest of the money, uh, which is around 8 percent, goes to the uh, uh, universities and uh, uh, around the 12% goes to the Palestinian NGOs. This is in roughly how it is distributed. Where the money has to go, the money has to go first to the Palestinian people, not uh, in, in, uh, directly. Not, um, how? 
for example why why the un agencies uh, they have their own budget why they are sharing the money which is donated for example from spain uh, from spain to the palestinian people not to the un agencies which 90% 95% of the employers are not palestinian uh, and uh, they don't pay income tax to the Palestinian uh, uh, Authority. And also they have very high salaries actually. Uh, uh, running cost and management cost is very high. That's why uh, we do believe as Palestinian people, the money should go to the Palestinian institutions. The, the UN agencies, they can help the Palestinians by their own budget, not from the budget allocated to the Palestinians. Uh, that's one one important thing. The second thing also uh, universities. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that universities to, to be supported from international fund uh, should be priority because education is meaning that uh, the, the people will be qualified to find a job if they have a good education. Uh, the young Palestinians, they if you are edu- if you. Uh, give them money to be educated in their country. This is will not be an f- economic burden to their families because otherwise they will send to them to Europe or to Russia or and this is a huge burden of uh, economic burden to the poor families. That's why if you support the universities, you support the Palestinian young people, the poor people, and also you help Palestinians to stay in Palestine. And that's uh, important. Uh, and also, to be frank with you, most of European countries, I mean governments of Europe, they support the Palestinian security forces. Why we need security forces? We are under occupation. And we, are, we, are, we, have, we have a huge numbers of security forces. And this is to protect Israel. That's why sometimes I feel uh, we are subcontractor to the occupation. We don't need security forces. We need police, traffic police, and the crime police, and that's it. We don't need uh, other things. And Europe, they have to to reallocate money from security forces to the education, to the health, to the social welfare, not to the security force. And we are talking about peace. Peace doesn't need a huge amount, hundreds of people for security forces. <laughs> that's that's for the uh, the first question. The second question, you are right. Uh, after Oslo agreement and after Madrid conference, m- both nations, both uh, open-minded people from both sides, from Israeli side, Palestinian side, they try to to work together. They try to promote uh, peace uh, mechanisms. They try to do joint project, uh, but. All these uh, ideas failed because the Israeli government doesn't want peace. The Israeli government uh, doesn't incre- uh, create any, <coughs> so, sorry, any healthy environment to promote peace values. Nowadays, you know, today the Israeli government formed by very radical political groups, and they they announced at the same di- uh, time. Uh, today, they will build 50,000 houses in Palestinian territories. How you can cooperate with this kind of government, with, with the people who are uh, actually, nobody, uh, nobody against uh, uh, coexistence. We agreed that 78% of the historic Palestine is Israel. We agreed, we signed in Oslo agreement. But Israel has offered us nothing, nothing, nothing. Even even to go to 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 your ha- houses in village or in uh, Jerusalem or uh, in, in in Gaza, you need permits. Uh, you cannot drive your car wherever. The Israelis they have different roads. The settlements they have different water. They have running uh, swimming pools, and while next door village has no drinking water. That's why the spirit of peace is already lost. That's why the people who are still believe in peace, and I still believe in peace, we don't have a space to move. Thank 
Thank you. No, no, but for, for us, for migration studies, uh, mobility is one of the key features uh, of migration yeah. studies. And then what you are saying is that uh, 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 Palestine is not only a refugee state uh, by itself, an isolated state, but uh, uh, the lack of mobility is one of, of the features. And then uh, how can, if, 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 if we think of, from a theoretical point of view, mobility shape societies? But without mobility, there, there is not society. Uh, because, uh, and then from this point of view, I think uh, uh, what, what you are expressing is, is very, uh, very strong from a theoretical point of view. Because what you are saying is that it is very difficult to, to speak about a Palestinian society because uh, a society means mobility. Uh, yes, exactly. or not, Because yes. it is through mobility that uh, we make a society. Uh? Uh, um, and there is uh, other questions coming from Sonei. I just read it. Uh, what kind of labor market policies beside for funding towards university are needed to address uh, uh, the youth uh, uh, budget in, uh, in Palestine and I, uh, unemployment? Uh, could you, uh, sorry, I just lost it. Okay, I, I, I lost the question now uh, because it, it's running with other chats. Uh, but uh, in any case, uh, uh, if you can answer this question uh, about the market, uh, apart from the funding, uh, is there other uh, opportunities? Could, you, could this policy be related to resource related needs? Uh, I, I just take it now. Yes, uh, actually, this is the question also is, 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 is the topic for discussion among the Palestinian scholars, the Palestinian researchers, uh, how we can balance market with the university needs and the university graduates. It's, it's a, big, a big challenge for us. But to tell you frankly, in the past, the only assets and the only advantage the Palestinians uh, used to, to, to go to Arab countries to work because they are well educated. That's, that's important. That's why we believe education is, is, first of all, is part of our dignity and identity, and at the same time is part of our tools to find a jobs. Now, the, 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 the types of uh, specialization, the topics, the, what kind of a professionalism we need, this is uh, need a, 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 a uh, detailed uh, discussion and it is not easy when you have a small market uh, as the professor Ricard said uh, there is no mobility uh, market meaning mobility that's why they call it free market free market which means free mobility and that's why uh, uh, most of the Palestinian universities now reconsider the the faculties the the programs uh, to 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 open a new market to the Palestinian young people. But to tell you frankly, uh, as I said earlier, the only assets to improve the, our dignity and uh, entity is the education. Thank you. Uh, I think we have some other question, maybe the last ones, because we are just uh, very close. Sally, Sally Haddad uh, has uh, some question um, and he, he, he will formulate uh, the question directly. Sally, it's yours. It's your turn now. Sally Haddad? Hello. Yes, Sally. Hello, thank you very for your uh, presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, I want to ask regarding, uh, you were saying about the large interruption. I cannot. Sorry, sorry, it's difficult, it's difficult to listen. Uh, okay. I, I, I uh, close my, my micro, but uh, can you One reformulate? Second. I close my. Hello, can you, is it clear now? Yes. This is clear, go, go, Sally. Okay, uh, I, I, I want to ask regarding, uh, you were saying about enlarging the refugees' camps. Yeah. And uh, I, I wanted to ask, because I'm, I come from Lebanon and I totally agree about uh, the refugees' camps in Lebanon. They are too tiny, the infrastructure is below zero. And the situation in these refugee camps is uh, disastrous, as you said. Um, but my question is, who might be responsible of negotiating um, with the governments all over the world about enlarging these refugee camps, or at least 
negotiating with governments inside Palestine and in all the, usually the camps, who might be responsible for negotiating for a better, um, better camps? Yeah. Is it now, the government? Is it the Lebanese government? Is it the international uh, organization? Who might take the lead in, in, in having like a better life for these people living there? Yeah, and thank I'm you. Sorry. Maybe think, the, the last question for uh, uh, Dr. Tamimi. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the legal body and the legitimate body to negotiate uh, to improve the situation of, uh, of uh, Palestinian refugees is BLO, because BLO is uh, the, the only and the sole representative of the Palestinian people. But to do so, first of all, the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization, BLO, should put this issue, it is very hot issue, on the Arab League table, on the Arab table, and to discuss it and to take Arab decision to improve the refugees' uh, situation inside Arab countries. As I said in, in Spain, if I move to Spain and I get a status of immigrant, I can work. But in Lebanon, I cannot work. I cannot move uh, very, very well. And I, I have been in, in some uh, refugees in Lebanon. It's, as you said, is not zero, it's below zero. And it is really humiliation to the human beings and uh, for, for and touching the dignity of the people. Uh, that's, that's why. And also the Palestinian uh, uh, authority, uh, they have to, to, to make this issue top priority for them to improve the human conditions of the Palestinian refugees. Forget the political uh, argument, it takes time, negotiations takes time. But as a human being, as a human being, the refugees uh, camps should be improved. And this is the responsibility of international community, Arab League, Palestinian Authority, and the Palestinians in diaspora. The, there are many Palestinians in diaspora. They are rich, uh, healthy, welfare, uh, very good situation. They have to support also the Palestinian refugees. But they, they want to trust to the BLO. And actually, unfortunately, BLO started to lose the trust from the Palestinians in, uh, in, uh, in diaspora. Thank you for this, uh, this intervention and to stress the idea of mobility because uh, uh, mobility, as you stress, is linked to well-being, is, is, is linked to dignity, and a society with, uh, without mobility maybe cannot be defined as a society by itself. Huh? And, and then uh, mobility at the international arena uh, could also be uh, defined in these terms. Uh, uh -huh. And then uh, international mobility means also well-being for them and then uh, uh, control of this kind of international mobility at the international arena is very similar uh, in these terms of, of, for, for the Palestinian situation, uh, uh, trying to, to, to avoid people to move uh, uh, and to be confined uh, uh, in the confinement uh, in the countries and so on. And then I think there are so many uh, similarities of, of that. But of course, the Palestinian situation is, is worse, as you say, because uh, uh, um, there is not only natural disaster, but political construction of this disaster, uh, which is very important to take that into account. Huh? Uh, and uh, and uh, the international community uh, uh, do uh, very little uh, to avoid uh, this, uh, this political intervention. But uh, in any case, we, we have more arguments uh, about the Palestinian. We have had also an overview about the current Palestinian situation. Uh, um, and uh, we, we just hope that uh, maybe in the few months, uh, um, the situation will be better for, for people. Uh, we are very grateful for your intervention because I know that you are, uh, you are many hats, but uh, one of them is, uh, is academic and scholar, but also uh, you are involved in NGOs. So you are putting in practice uh, your ideas and helping people through NGOs, uh, basically uh, to the basic need, which is water, which is basic for a society. Uh, we are very grateful uh, that you are um, being able to transfer this, uh, this experience and knowledge uh, related to that. Uh, we, we take uh, most of the arguments. Uh, we feel ourselves uh, much more informed about the Palestinian situation, which is not always uh, the case uh, uh, on the news. 
and uh, thank you uh, for all. And uh, maybe uh, we, we keep in touch, of course, uh, for our one uh, uh, project. And, and, and I hope uh, I will have all the opportunity to, uh, uh, to discuss uh, these kind of issues and to learn more about the Palestinian situation. Thank you for, for your intervention. Thank you for your effort to incorporate coronavirus also uh, situation. Thanks also for the participants to be there. And, uh, and to EMMED also technically and institutionally to allow this, uh, this debate and this lecture. Thanks to all. Thank, thank you very much. Likewise here, thank you for participants. Thank you, uh, Professor Ricard, to uh, give me this opportunity. And uh, I wish uh, to all of you a uh, good life and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you to all. Bye-bye. Sure.